So we've been playing with chat GPT for the last four hours, okay? We started this whole other video about how exciting it would be if we put our efforts into building a quality GPT. Um, and our efforts have been uh, foiled. So here's what happened. Basically, we made all these instruction files, uploaded them into the custom GPT builder on your computer. Using the best practices that we found using, online. <laughs> and worked wonderfully. So then we turned on my computer and decided to recreate that experience. We uploaded exactly the same files, which look like this. We made a main instruction file that has all kinds of specificities about how this bot should generate a UX interview script. We have question guidelines uh, and we have an actual template of how to structure mm -hmm. the answer. And for whatever reason, it refuses to do the exact same thing that it did five minutes prior on your computer. The most important thing that this chatbot was supposed to do, okay, is it has to gather the requirements from the UX researcher. Yes. These requirements here. Yeah. That's it, okay? It gathers those requirements, and then based off all that beautiful context that you give it, <laughs> it generates a script, okay? <laughs> Once it has an understanding. But what we found yeah. is that these machine, especially ChatGPT, I don't know about the other ones, it's so, bi it's so biased towards just being helpful and generating things as soon as it can, rather mm -hmm. than asking contextual questions, that it just goes. Yeah. It just goes. What's more troubling is like, if we look at this file, it literally says, it is mandatory to gather the following requirements. So we come over here, help me write an interview script for diabetics. I mean, this couldn't be any more unspecific. Who are they? Men, women, what age? For what? A, a mobile app, yeah. a hardware device? It didn't even ask us this, even though, again, if we look at this file, it literally says it is mandatory to gather the following requirements. And then on the left here, you can say, you can see what we try to do, which is when the UX researcher doesn't specify all the requirements, you should not make assumptions unless the UX researcher asks you to explicitly. It agrees. Yeah. It literally agrees. And then you go over here and it's like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> write a thing about for diabetic men. And it just goes. And again, it missed like half of the things we asked yeah. it to do. How require. long is the interview supposed to be? Are you building an app? Honestly, of all the things we asked, how long is probably the most important. Yeah, if I have 15 minutes, half an hour. <laughs> it gives you 100 questions. It's crazy. So when you're dealing with errors in code, yeah. you can kind of make the assumption that you're the one being ignorant or there's some kind of mistake that you've missed a comma or a bracket or something like that. But when you're trying to troubleshoot using words, right. it's just like dealing with the most annoying, incompetent piece of garbage person who's just like, did you mean this? <laughs> it's like, no, I did not mean this. I meant that. And they'll be like, oh, did you mean this? I'm like, no, I, as, as per my previous thing that I just said, I meant that thing. Do that thing that I'm telling you to do. I think what you said was brilliant because it's like, unlike code where you can at least go like, you know what, this computer is dumb. It cares about a comma. Like in code, if you guys don't code, in code, you miss a comma, literally the entire app might break. Yeah. And also it will show you True. in the code where the, where the error is. <laughs> Debugging. Debugging. Debugging is one of the most important things for building any piece of software. And right now, the UX of debugging on ChatGPT is completely broken. Yeah. It's impossible to understand why it's making assumptions. If we go into the configure page and expand, you know, the configure page basically it generates like a summary based on all the instructions you've given it so far. And we read this. It says the stuff that we specified. It's it like it says it. Yeah. And somehow it still doesn't do it. And then, you know, I think part of why the frustration was so big is because it feels like a dumb person. Yeah. <laughs> because there's something so infuriating about something that's supposed to be intelligent, but isn't. Yeah. That's why people don't get angry at dogs. Yeah. When you tell the dog to sit and it doesn't sit because we don't expect a dog to have some, you know. Totally. Linguistic understanding. It's just like, oh, poor dog. Yeah. You know, same thing with a computer. Like when there's a bug, yes, it's frustrating, but it's like, well... Maybe my syntax is off. Yeah, totally. What's the excuse here? I, I think that's what you just said was, was super important, right? Like, okay, this is 
on its own quite innovative, right? right? We can build some type of software, even though it's just a chatbot, through textual language inputs and generate something out of it. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. But what you realize is you can't just build one piece of the product, right? right? This is basically an incomplete product, in my view. Yeah. Because there is no way to debug via language, you know? There, there, there's not enough of a curiosity from ChatGPT to kind of create that interplay between prompting and requests and asking questions. And we're just kind of setting ourselves up for failure here, I think, if we just always bias ChatGPT towards generating as soon as possible. Right. I think for a while, we were all getting very excited about the potential of this. And as a studio, we heard, we host workshops about the power of using large language models, specifically ChatGPT, because it's the most accessible publicly or like widely. But I think now, this is the first time I personally realized that deploying your own custom long, lang, uh, large language model, I, I finally understand the benefit of that. I almost want to train one now yeah. to see if we can make it like, be kind of careful, like before you give me a user interview script, collect these seven things. A human would never make that error. Totally. Right? If, if we had like a, a UX intern right now and we're like, hey, you need to help the senior designer build a user interview script, go make sure you have all these requirements before you write an in, uh, the interview script. They would never be confused about what we're asking. Yeah. You know? Well, they would be like, well, uh, I'm not sure what you want. And then they would ask us what we need from them. Exactly. Right? They'd be like, oh, I gave this intern way too broad of a mandate. And they're like, well, I don't know what to do. Let me ask some clarifying questions. Right, right. And so I think, I think maybe like a, a few things, right? One is we would love to see like a reduction in this bias to like, okay, here's the answer. That's one. But two, specifically for the custom GPT builder, right now, this configure page, this doesn't do it for me. Like, even if I click on additional settings, what is this? Just check boxes for, for more stuff. Where do I see, like, how do I debug you? And, and, we, and we tried. You know, you would keep asking it, like, why did you not respect my rules? Yeah, yeah. ChatGPT hates why. <laughs> you know, like, um, I think it was in a previous session, so maybe it's gone now. Uh, but it would be basically instantly apologize, not explain itself, and then be like, okay, I'll do it next time. <laughs> Instantly, we would test and it would not do it. So, I think overall, this has been quite disappointing. Yeah. We got, we got, I got a good laugh out of it. I was, that was a workout laugh for me. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but but I, think, I think it's like, if we're going to deploy this to the public, which we clearly have, and we expect them to build things that are useful, this is an incomplete tool. This is the first time I think that it's crystallized to me how incomplete just a chat is. Yeah. for building something complex and truly genuinely useful for an end user. Yeah. If you have <laughs> tried using... Oh, don't try anything. So, you know, I'm sure many of you guys have had your own frustrations. If you have any that were notable, or maybe if you have a tip for us, maybe we did something wrong, we didn't understand. Yeah, if you know anything about debugging with ChatGPT, let us know, please. Yeah, put it in the comments. Otherwise... Subscribe for more. It's not always going to be a rant. We will find productive ways to work with this machine. But right now, we experienced something that was quite frustrating and quite novel to us. And we think it's important to flag this and share this with everyone. So we look forward to seeing you next time.